The Knuckbox G2 from GMK Tech is an even smaller mini PC using Intel's entry-level 4-core N100 CPU. This one is easily pocketable and powered by USB-C, a pretty uncommon feature for budget mini PCs, yet highly requested. Paired with 12GB of soldered LPDDR5 and your choice of storage size, it starts at $180 US dollars for the 512GB model, or for another $20, you get 1TB. But before we continue, the Ezus Rec Experts screen recorder is an all-in-one solution for recording everything on your screen, whether it's online meetings, gameplay, tutorials, and more. Rec Experts supports 4K and 60fps in various video formats, and there are plenty of additional features, including a simple video editor to clean up your recording. Give it a test run with the link in the video description. In the packaging, you'll find a red replacement cover for the top which makes the mini go faster, or something. There's also a monitor mount, HDMI and USB-C wall power supply. The G2 is made entirely of plastic, but it doesn't feel cheap. Build quality is pretty good overall. There's a blue LED down at the bottom of this mini, which isn't bright. You can change the color of it in the BIOS, or if you find it annoying, turn it off. Greed is good, so let's go with that. Greed for lack of a better word, is good. Ports on this one are found on all sides except the front. On the right side, triple USB 3 5 gigabit. On the back, USB-C power input, dual gigabit LAN, and headphone jack. On the left side, dual HDMI 2.0 and DisplayPort 1.4. Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth are included. A decent mix for a smaller mini. Isn't it interesting how suddenly with older Lake N CPU minis we're getting dual LAN ports on almost each device? I don't use it myself and would prefer another USB port instead, but hopefully dual LAN is more useful for your usage case. Like the previous GMK Tech Mini PC I reviewed, this one is very simple to open and doesn't even need a screwdriver. Just pop that lid off with confidence and you've got access to the M.2 2242 slot. It's occupied by a FuturePath SSD. Removing these screws will get you to the CMOS battery underneath, if it ever needs replacing. And you can unscrew the bottom to get to the cooling if it ever needs a clean. So it's definitely one of the easier minis for disassembly. The GMK Tech Knuckbox G2 comes with Windows 11 pre-installed, but Ubuntu works fine if you want to use Linux instead. The Intel N100 CPU has plenty of uses such as an office PC, 4K media player, or retro gaming box. You're able to play most PS2 and GameCube era games at 720p. What part of get in don't you understand? To the elementary school, please. I have a presentation about the joys of science. Hi. You can also play some modern esports titles at 1080p. I've done plenty of N100 esports and retro game benchmarks in previous reviews, so check out those if you're interested. But I often get asked about video editing, so I want to cover that before we hit the benchmarks. I've thought about how to benchmark video editing many times, but there are just way too many variables, such as video resolution, bitrate, post-processing effects, footage layers, duration, and so on. Then there's the two different workloads of scrubbing, which is moving across the video timeline during your edit, and exporting, which is done once the edit is complete. That being said, I copied over a 1080p project of mine to see how usable Adobe Premiere actually is. This is an 8.5 minute video project without a lot of effects and a few layers. I think scrubbing across the timeline is most important, because with exporting, you just have to wait a bit longer. But if it's slow scrubbing while doing the edit, you're going to tear your hair out in frustration and end up with even less than me. And it's pretty decent. Video editing on a 1080 display with 1080p footage is not bad and reasonably responsive. I've got the preview resolution at half. If I had to use this mini to edit my YouTube video at 1080p, I think it's doable. Exporting is slow, but if you're not in a hurry, it will get done eventually. So, while video editing is possible, my rule of thumb for video production is, you can never have enough power. That's why I stick to a desktop for my video production work. But I'm very aware there are many people that don't do it professionally, 
and or are on a budget. So I hope this helps answer the question. By default, the GMK Tech Knockbox G2 has a power limit of 10 watts for PL1 and 25 watts for PL2. 30 watts is the maximum setting that I've managed to squeeze out extra performance from an N100 CPU. But this mini didn't show any improvement because of thermal constraints. So for the benchmarks, I switched back to default power limits. In single core, the Knockbox G2 does well, being at the top of the chart with the other N100s. Small variances, Nothing to it really. Multicore is where we see a drop in performance. It's not bad, but it is around 10% behind the fastest N100 I've tested. And in video encoding, it's around 12% behind the B-Link EQ12. For the graphics benchmarks, the Knockbox G2 had the highest DX11 score out of the N100s. And in DX12, very close to the others. Idle power draw of 9 watts is as expected. Max power draw was fairly high considering the lower multi-core CPU performance. A smaller mini means less space for a heatsink and fan. And the G2 had a higher temp under load but just managed to keep under 90C. Fan behavior by default is a bit strange but can be changed in the BIOS. While fan noise can briefly hit a peak of 41 dBA, it settles after a few seconds and seems to ramp up and down from 35 to 38 for the rest of the workload. So I'm listing 38 dBA as the load noise here. While it's not super loud, it's one of the noisier units in this category. SSD temps hold up well since it's M.2 SATA. The drive temperature sensor never moved from its 45C reading. And the included drive is not the fastest, but pretty decent. Alright, time for the conclusion. The GMK Tech G2 is a portable mini PC, taking up very little space. Single core and graphics performance is good. It's powered by USB-C, and for as low as $180 US, you get 12GB of DDR5, which is nice. But, that 12GB is soldered on. There's also no space for additional storage options. Multi-core performance trails the top end by around 10%, and noise and temps are up due to the smaller form factor. But overall, it's pretty decent. If you're wanting something smaller than the average mini PC without sacrificing ports, except for one USB, then the GMK Tech Knockbox G2 may be what you're looking for. And if you want a lot more performance from your mini PC, check out my review of the GMK Tech Knockbox K2, featuring the powerful AMD Ryzen 7735HS CPU. Cheers!